The Resilient Living Campus of Hunt Utilities Group is a laboratory to learn how we can build homes that heat and cool themselves. Our first three projects were grand experiments. Old Main, office and meeting space, built with three foot bales of straw and mud. The Manny Shop, 15,000 square feet of industrial space with almost no heating or air conditioning costs. The Ark, an experimental home unlike any other. High performance homes are houses that don't take a lot of money to own. Housing that essentially heats and cools itself without any fossil fuels. You, know, you don't have to pour tons of money every month into fuel to keep the place operating. And they're highly comfortable and they're healthy. It was time to take everything we learned from our first three projects and build a high performance home that made good economic sense for a typical family. So we developed a simple practical arc, or SPARK. When the SPARK proved itself not only energy efficient, but also cost effective, we doubled down on the idea, creating a duplex or twin arc, now known as TWARK. The next design was how to build a small practical house that works as well as the arc, but costs way less. I think if you build a building a lot like the SPARK, the cost might be 10% higher than an average house, but it's how much cheaper to own after that, and rather practical. Spark and Twark were designed using the three bedrock principles for energy efficient homes. Super insulation, solar capture, and thermal mass. Like the Ark and the Manny Shop, the Spark was built using 12 inch thick structural insulated panels or SIPs creating walls equivalent to R50 insulation. In the duplex, we sought to achieve the same insulation value in a more traditional manner. Instead of insulated foam panels, we used common stick construction and blown cellulose insulation, but with a twist. It's easy to see here that the walls are about a foot thick, and that's in common with every one of our buildings, heavy on the insulation. This building is different than the rest of our foot thick walls. This one, instead of a SIP, this is made out of two sets of two by fours, a set here and a set here, 12 inches apart. And it's filled with insulation in between. One area for heat loss in a standard home is where the truss meets the wall. There, rather than insulation, it is solid wood, which serves as a conduit for cold outside air to reach indoors. We address this by using a drop-down truss. In this way, the ceiling actually hangs a foot below the top of the wall. This allows the wall insulation and the ceiling insulation to overlap, eliminating what is known as the cold corner. Like the Ark, the other buildings each sit on a bed of sand. Their foundations are like sandboxes, made of thick insulating styrofoam, filled with two feet of sand or more, and covered with a concrete floor. One thing we do every time is we have a solar capture area on every building. During the winter time, the sun is low in the sky and it hits the south wall and transfers an enormous amount of energy. All we've got to do is capture it and hang on to it. This is the passive greenhouse on the south side of the building. Its main job is to catch sun. Sun comes in here, heats the place up enormously, and up above there, we can capture the hottest air and it comes down and flows through a whole bunch of pipes in the insulated mass under the floor. Whereas our first experiment in the Manny Shop used six layers of tubes warming six feet of sand, we learned that it was far more than needed. The spark and the twark use only one layer of tubes warming 30 inches of sand all of it contained inside an insulated styrofoam box. This passive solar heating system is backed up with standard in-floor electric heat. Also like the Ark, we took advantage of the foot-thick walls by installing two sets of double glazed windows, one on the inside wall and one on the outside wall. This window system is energy efficient, cheaper than triple glazed windows, and useful as a display case for knickknacks, pottery, and sculptures. 
The Spark, a single family home, is 1,340 square feet, including three bedrooms, two full baths, and a sunroom. It costs an average of $75 a month for all the electricity to heat the building as well as provide lights, hot water, computers, and appliances. The Spark was so successful as a floor plan, we liked how it worked. So we built the Twark, and that's essentially the same floor plan as in the Spark, except that there are two of them side by side in a duplex. Each apartment is 1,300 square feet, three bedrooms, two full baths, and a sunroom. Electricity for each side runs about $77 per month, inclusive of heat and all household living needs. Even compared to standards for a Minnesota Green Star home, these homes are ultra efficient in saving energy. Some high performance homes, they cost a lot more up front. One of our goals is to get that cost down so it's cheaper and far more comfortable to own one. It's way better on the ecology as we get more and more worried about the global warming and things like that. Uh, it, it helps there, you're doing your part. And it's safer. If you run out of electricity, if the lines go down and they can't be fixed for a week, one of these homes will survive in a, at least a semi-comfortable fashion.